A young millionaire preparing for an important meeting spotted a beggar woman with a baby in the rain. Without hesitation, he handed her the keys to his house. Upon his return, he entered without knocking the door and was horrified by what he saw. In the vibrant heart of New York City, Paul weaved through the bustling corridors of one of the nation's most esteemed architecture events. The sharp contrast between the opulent setting and the evening's altruistic mission was palpable. Amidst the glitz and glamour, this gathering pulsated with a noble cause. It was a charitable endeavour aimed at raising funds for housing projects for the underprivileged. Esteemed architects like Paul generously contributed designs and blueprints for these noble ventures. The essence of the night revolved around pooling resources to breathe life into these visions. Amidst a sea of elites flaunting their affluence and status, Paul commanded attention. Revered as one of the foremost architects of his time, his presence resonated as profoundly as the projects he championed. Yet, Beneath his outward success, whispers circulated about his altered demeanor following the tragic loss of his wife in an accident, coupled with his responsibilities toward his ailing father. Some interpreted his demeanor as aloofness, but those acquainted with life's adversities recognized it as his coping mechanism. In the midst of all the hustle and bustle at the event, Paul bumped into Jesse, an architect extraordinaire, respected for her extensive knowledge and achievements in the field. Paul, having someone with your level of expertise here is really something, she commented, her gaze intense. I've heard you've been managing a heavy workload while also looking after your father. That's truly impressive. Paul gave a polite smile and nodded, although he couldn't shake the feeling of being somewhat out of place amidst the glitz and glamour. Feeling uneasy, Jesse added, These gatherings might seem superficial, but they often reveal more than meets the eye. So, what brings you here today, Paul? It doesn't seem like it's solely for professional networking. Paul smiled sadly. Being here feels more like an obligation than a desire. You understand that my life isn't just about architecture. It's shaped by a variety of human experiences and the wisdom passed down from my father. Paul paused, reminiscing about tough times. Even in the face of hardship, my dad always extended a helping hand. He was humble, but incredibly giving. He brought me up on his own, and each sacrifice he made imparted invaluable wisdom. Jessie listened intently, showing admiration in her demeanor. Encountering someone who sticks to such principles, especially while achieving your level of success, is rare. Your father must be an extraordinary man, remarked Paul, pride evident in his eyes. He went above and beyond to support us, whether it was fixing neighbors' houses or providing private tutoring. He always believed true wealth wasn't in possessions, but in enriching others' lives. Jesse nodded understanding the weight of Paul's words. It really gives insight into who you are, Paul, and how you navigate life and career. Your example could benefit many. Paul smiled, thankful for Jesse's appreciation. I strive to live in a manner that honors my father's teachings. He instilled in me the value of fostering connections among people, of cultivating realms of empathy and support. Jesse beamed with genuine admiration. She, too, had embarked on life from humble beginnings. Though she excelled academically, ascending to the pinnacle of her profession, a tinge of melancholy lingered in the depths of her gaze. The prospect of family eluded her, a facet of her life held in quiet reserve. Departing from the Paul Architecture Gathering, he made his way back to a home that had evolved into more than mere living quarters, but a sanctuary. Upon arrival, he discovered his father, now residing with him due to his ailing health, engrossed in a late-night program despite his physical struggles. Mr. Joel exuded vitality and sharpness of mind. 
How was the event, son? He inquired, his interest piqued. I aim to live by the values my father taught me. He emphasized the importance of building connections and nurturing empathy and support. Jessie radiated genuine admiration. Like me, she started from humble beginnings. Despite her academic success and reaching the top of her profession, a hint of sadness lingered in her eyes. The idea of starting a family remained elusive to her, quietly reserved in her life. Leaving the Paul architecture gathering, he returned to a home that had become more than just a place to live, but a sanctuary. Upon reaching home, he found his father, now living with him due to failing health, absorbed in a late-night program despite his physical struggles. Mr. Joel emanated vitality and mental sharpness. How was the event, son? He asked, clearly interested. Mr. Joel had faced innumerable difficulties in the past after Paul's mother abandoned them. He assumed the enormous responsibility of raising him alone despite financial adversities. He always prioritized Paul's education, believing firmly that it was the path to a better future. All the money he earned was invested in his son's studies with determination and dedication. Paul took advantage of every learning opportunity, becoming the renowned architect he is today. Even after achieving success, he never forgot the struggles and sacrifices of his father, always staying by his side and caring for him with the same love and gratitude that he received in his childhood. The next morning, Paul woke up early, preparing for the important day that was waiting for him. He dressed meticulously, choosing an elegant suit suitable for the crucial meeting in a neighboring city. As he headed towards the car, a torrential rain began to fall. The driver, who knew Paul's routine well, waited expectantly. It looks like we're in for a bit of a challenge. Tough going out there, Mr. Paul, the driver remarked as he spotted Paul approaching. Traffic in the nearby city was chaotic due to heavy rain. Paul's car crawled along the jam-packed road. Lost in contemplation about the upcoming meeting, he watched the rain drumming against the window. Suddenly, a scene by the roadside grabbed his attention. A woman, clearly destitute, cradling a newborn baby, desperately shielding it from the pouring rain. The sight of such desperation and vulnerability deeply moved Paul. Without a second thought, he instructed the driver, Stop the car, please. I need to help that woman. Aware of Paul's empathy for those in need on the streets, the driver cautioned. But Sir Paul, you'll get soaked and ruin your suit, and we're already running late for the meeting. Paul remained resolute. I couldn't care less about the suit or the delay. That woman and her baby need our help. Now, he swung open the car door, stepping out into the deluge. As he approached the woman, he inquired, Need a hand? You and your little one shouldn't be out in this downpour. Got a place to take shelter? A home? The woman, still startled and shielding her child from the rain, replied hastily, No, we've got nowhere. She didn't delve into specifics about her predicament. Paul sensed an immediate need for action. Dashing back through the rain, he implored the driver to pop open the glove compartment. Retrieving a set of keys, he hurried back to the woman. After a brief self-introduction, he asked, Which one's your name? Ariel, she replied, holding her daughter closer to shield her from the rain. Ariel, this key opens my dad's place. It's nearby. Currently, he's staying with me, so the house is free. Can you and your daughter stay there? Paul asked offering her the keys. I have to rush to a meeting, but my driver will take you, he added, handing the keys to Ariel. With a quick return to his car, already drenched from the rain, Paul instructed his driver, I'll walk the rest of the way to the meeting. Please take Ariel and the little one to my dad's place. It's nearby. And swing by the market. Get everything they need. Food, clothes, diapers, you name it. Acknowledging Paul's generosity, the driver nodded. You can count on me, Mr. Paul. I'll handle everything. 
With that, Paul's driver bid him farewell and returned to where Ariel and her daughter sought refuge from the rain. With a warm smile, he approached, saying, Let's go, all right? No need to fret, I'll get you both to a secure spot. Sir Paul's keen on lending a hand to you and your little one. Ariel, however, eyed the driver warily, a mix of fear and suspicion clouding her gaze. I don't know you, seen enough on TV to know what goes down. Can't just trust anyone like that, she murmured, clutching her daughter tighter. Sensing her unease, the driver sought to reassure her. I get it. The fear's real. But trust me, Mr. Paul's got a heart of gold, just wants to lend a hand. To prove his point, he flipped open his wallet, revealing snapshots of his own kin. Look, I'm a dad too, been on Mr. Paul's team for years. He's the real deal, genuinely cares. Studying the photos and the earnest face of the driver, Ariel remained cautious yet felt a glimmer of hope for safety and shelter. With a nod, she finally agreed to accompany him. Carefully, she assisted her daughter into the car, shielding her from the rain as the driver prepared to take them to Paul's father's house. Before reaching their destination, they stopped by the market to grab some groceries and diapers for the baby. Later that afternoon, after a long and productive meeting, Paul exited the building to find his driver waiting for him. Once seated inside, Paul inquired about Ariel and their daughter's journey. Did they make it safely to my father's house? The driver assured him, Yes, Mr. Paul, but I dropped them off at the beginning of the street. I thought it would be easier to maneuver the car. Paul, somewhat surprised by the driver's decision, gently scolded him. You should have dropped them off at the house's door, especially with this rain and having a little girl with them. He paused for a moment, reflecting, but it's all right. It's been a busy day for all of us. Tomorrow, I'll swing by to see how they're doing and ensure they've got everything they need. Paul continued, gazing thoughtfully out the car window. Thoughts of Ariel and his daughter's well-being filled his mind, yet he was confident he'd made the right call in lending a hand. Upon reaching home, Paul barely turned the key when Mrs. Dorothy, who'd been looking after his father, greeted him with unexpected news. Mr. Paul, your father, Mr. Joel, grabbed a spare set of keys and headed straight to your place after you left. He mentioned wanting a change of scenery for a few days. Seems he's feeling a tad restless but somewhat better, she relayed, a hint of hesitation in her voice. Paul was taken aback by the news. He went off alone. Despite knowing better, Paul voiced his concern about his father's well-being. Mrs. Dorothy interjected, confirming that, indeed, he had gone solo. She explained she had waited for Paul to accompany him, sensing he wouldn't have allowed his father to go alone. His father appeared resolute, insisting he felt fit enough to manage alone for a few days. Learning of his sudden decision to seek solace at the other house where his daughter and comfort awaited, Paul's mind immediately raced with potential complications. Without a moment's delay, he instructed the driver to rush there. As the car sped through the streets, worry gnawed at his chest. Arriving at the house, Paul was greeted by an open door and an ambulance parked outside. His heart skipped a beat, seeing his father being loaded onto a stretcher. Paul rushed inside, his heart pounding with panic, desperate to make sense of the chaos. He hurried over to the paramedics, identifying himself as his father's son. What's going on? He implored. The doctor, meeting his gaze, delivered the news with composure. Your father suffered a stroke. Gratefully, Paul learned that his wife had acted swiftly, summoning the ambulance and ultimately saving his father's life. Overwhelmed with relief and gratitude towards Ariel, he felt a shiver of fear at the near miss. Walking alongside the stretcher, resolute to stand by his father's side, Paul watched in stunned silence as the doctor carefully loaded his father into the ambulance. As the vehicle sped off to the hospital, Paul turned back towards the house, his mind racing, seeking out Ariel and her daughter. 
Approaching them, he struggled to mask his anxiety, the recent scare etched on his face despite his efforts. Paul, deeply touched, turned to Ariel, struggling to find words adequate enough to express his gratitude for her actions. I'm truly indebted to you, Ariel, he said a gentle smile playing on his lips as he attempted to lighten the somber mood of the moment. Understanding the gravity of the situation, Ariel replied with a reassuring tone. There's no need for thanks, Mr. Paul. I simply did what anyone in my position would do. It was mere happenstance that I was there when you needed help. Paul glanced over at the items Ariel had purchased, recognizing that they were just the bare necessities. I notice you've only picked up the essentials. You could have taken more, you know. Please, don't hesitate to take what you need, he remarked, concern evident in his voice as he wondered if she had everything required. Meeting his gaze with a blend of appreciation and anticipation, Ariel responded, I didn't want to overstep. Your kindness has already been more than generous. You've done so much for Us. In the ensuing silence, Paul felt a profound connection with Ariel, a shared understanding that transcended words. Paul's curiosity peaked as he leaned in, genuinely intrigued by Ariel's story. I'd love to learn more about you and your daughter's journey. He expressed earnestly, extending a compassionate hand. Ariel hesitated for a moment, weighing the decision to share her story. With a glance at her daughter, then back at Paul, she finally began to unravel her past. I never knew my mum, she began, her voice tinged with emotion, and growing up with a distant father who drowned his sorrows in alcohol made me feel invisible. Paul's attentive demeanour encouraged her to continue. I yearned for education, she continued, but my father forbade it. In the quiet of the night, I devoured books like Hidden, dreaming of a brighter tomorrow while he slept. Ariel paused, lost momentarily in the memories of her tumultuous upbringing. As time went by, life spiraled further downward. My dad delved deeper into alcohol. I tried to lend a hand, but to no avail. He was a tough character, often leaving me on edge, until one fateful encounter changed everything. She seemed genuinely kind, and we hit it off until I found out I was pregnant. Despite my fear, I hoped for a family. Ariel's voice wavered with pain as she recalled, he vanished the moment he learned of the pregnancy, never to be seen again. I managed to conceal it for a while, but when my dad discovered the truth, he exploded. He didn't listen, just threw me out with nothing to my name. Paul interjected, concern evident in his voice. How did you manage to survive? I begged for scraps, survived on the streets, and when my daughter arrived, it was the community who stepped up. Fearful and distrusting, I had to be strong for her. Paul gazed at Ariel, noticing not only the pain and fear etched on her face, but also an incredible resilience. You're incredibly strong, Ariel. Your story speaks of immense struggle. Ariel smiled sadly. I had no choice. Life was harsh, but I couldn't give up. For my daughter, I would face everything again. Her voice choked with emotion as she continued, I don't know how to thank you for everything. Paul smiled kindly. You have full access to all your father's books. Consider them yours too, he said as he prepared to leave. Paul turned to Ariel, handing her an envelope. Here's something to help with expenses, he said softly. Ariel looked at the envelope, feeling its weight. She cautiously opened it her eyes widening at the amount of money inside. Paul, this, this is a lot. I can't accept all this, she said, her voice trembling. Please, take it, Paul urged, his smile warm and encouraging. You need it more than I do. Use it for clothes, food, whatever you and your baby require. Tears filled Ariel's eyes. I don't even know how to thank you, she said softly. 
you're not just offering help, you're giving me hope. In the quiet that followed, Ariel studied Paul, a question forming in her mind. May I ask something? She ventured. Are you married, Paul? Paul's smile faded, a shadow crossing his face. I used to be, he began, his voice tinged with sadness. But my wife passed away in an accident just a month after our wedding. It's been three years now. Ariel covered her mouth, shocked and saddened by the revelation. I had no idea, Paul. I'm so sorry, she whispered. Paul shook his head gently. It's all right. It was hard, but I've learned to cope. The pain never truly fades, but we learn to carry on. Paul nodded, feeling an unexpected bond with Ariel as they shared their experiences of loss and resilience. Rising to his feet, Paul grabbed his keys. Thanks for everything, Ariel, he said genuinely. Ariel nodded, her lips forming a sad smile. Take care, Paul. Remember, you're not in this alone. With those words, he departed, leaving Ariel enveloped in a mix of gratitude, hope, and a newfound sense of belonging. Paul returned home, his mind swirling with thoughts of his encounter with Ariel and her narrative. The next day, he visited his father at the hospital. Though stable, his father still required constant care. Seated by the hospital bed, Paul recounted Ariel's story. The moments of solace she had provided, her swift action to save Mr. Dorothy and the challenges she had faced. His father listened closely, his face reflecting a range of emotions. You've done well, my boy. Ariel appears to be quite a remarkable and courageous woman, he murmured, his voice weak yet brimming with pride. It warms my heart to see the kindness you've grown into. I'm grateful to God for not forsaking me when I prayed for strength to raise you. A comfortable silence enveloped them briefly, each lost in their own thoughts. Then Paul's father, wearing a pensive expression, suggested, wouldn't it be wise to have Ariel and the baby closer to us? They could reside in our home. I yearn for more vitality around me, and you wouldn't have to travel as far to visit them. Paul pondered the proposal. The notion of having Ariel and their daughter nearby felt inviting, and the prospect of his father having more companionship appealed to him. That's a splendid idea, Dad. I'll discuss it with Ariel. I believe their presence would infuse our home with even more joy. Paul's father grinned with anticipation at the prospect. Having a girl around the house sounded fantastic to him. The place always felt too quiet when he was working. With that fresh idea in mind, Paul bid his father farewell, promising to consider the proposal seriously and talk it over with Ariel. Leaving the hospital, he felt optimistic, pondering the possibilities ahead. After a long day working on a big project, Paul was exhausted but determined. Driving to the house he shared with Ariel, he thought about the proposal he had in mind. Upon arrival, he found Ariel and sitting down next to her, he began, I need to discuss something important with you. Ariel looked at him with interest. What's going on, Paul? Taking a deep breath, Paul gathered his thoughts. My house is spacious, and since my father got sick, it's been really quiet. He loves reading, and I thought since you do too, you two could keep each other company. Moreover, if you're interested, he could assist you with your studies. Ariel appeared taken aback by the suggestion. Are you suggesting that my daughter and I move in with you? She inquired. Exactly, Paul affirmed. It would be wonderful to have both you and the little one here. I believe it would benefit my father. He'd feel less lonely, and you'd have a secure place to stay with access to any books you might need. Ariel lapsed into silence, evidently contemplating the proposition. That sounds amazing, Paul. I'm not sure how to express my gratitude. This would be a tremendous help for me and my daughter, and I'd cherish the opportunity to pursue further studies, she admitted. Paul beamed, feeling relieved and delighted by her response. 
So it's settled then. Let's make it happen. I think it'll be beneficial for all of us. With a grateful smile, Ariel accepted the offer and hurried off to gather her and her daughter's belongings. After completing their task, they headed back to Paul's place, Ariel brimming with hope for her future prospects. Stepping inside, Ariel couldn't contain her amazement. Wow, Paul, your house is stunning. You truly have a gift for architecture, she exclaimed, marveling at her surroundings. Paul smiled warmly in response. Thank you, Ariel. I hope both you and your daughter feel at home here. Over the next few days, Ariel's bond with Mr. Dorothy, Paul's father, grew stronger. He had an extensive book collection and eagerly began sharing his most prized reads with Ariel. Selecting an old book, Mr. Dorothy remarked, This was one of my favorites in my youth. I believe you'll enjoy it too. Ariel took the book, flipping through its aged pages, captivated by its contents. This is fascinating, she remarked to Mr. Dorothy, gratitude evident in her tone. Paul, recognizing the bond formed between them and Ariel's commitment, decided to forego hiring a caregiver for his father. Even when Paul was away, Ariel insisted on looking after Mr. Dorothy, tending to him with a blend of reverence and affection that he cherished deeply. I genuinely enjoy caring for your father, Paul. You've been incredibly kind to me and my daughter, Ariel expressed sincerely. It's the least I can do, she added. Paul, touched by her words, extended his appreciation. You're already part of the family, Ariel, he affirmed warmly. We're really thankful for you and your daughter being here. Paul expressed warmly as Ariel settled into his home. Ensuring her comfort, he not only provided a place to stay, but also empowered her financially. One day, amidst their kitchen conversations, Paul broached the subject. Ariel, I've been pondering something. I'd like to offer you a salary. You've been amazing, caring for my father and maintaining the house. It's crucial for you to have your own earnings. Ariel looked at Paul taken aback. That's not necessary. You're already giving us a home and everything we need, she responded. I understand, Paul nodded, but it's vital to me that you feel independent. I want you to be able to afford what you and your daughter require without hesitation. Gratefulness welled up in Ariel as she replied, Thank you, Paul. This means the world to me. It's been ages since I felt this valued and liberated. Ever since that moment, Paul started paying Ariel a regular wage. It was the first time in ages she tasted financial freedom. She could now get clothes for her daughter, pick out new books to read, and even stash some money away for the future without feeling dependent or having to ask for permission. This newfound freedom lit up Ariel's eyes, making her feel more self-assured and secure. Paul's kindness and respect not only gave her a safe place to live, but also the chance to rebuild her life with pride and self-sufficiency. As time passed, Paul and Ariel's bond grew more intimate and tender. Paul took delight in spending time with Clara, Ariel's little one, and they often went on strolls together. In those moments, Paul shared his love for architecture with Ariel, who eagerly listened, hanging on to every word. Ariel delved into the books Paul gave her, deepening their bond. Their shared affection evolved into something profound. Though Ariel harbored love for Paul in her heart, she kept it hidden, uncertain of the next steps. One evening, as they sat on the porch, watching the sunset, Paul confided in his father. Dad, I think I've fallen for Ariel. It's been years since I felt this way, but I'm unsure how to proceed. With a knowing smile, Paul's father advised, Son, life's too fleeting for doubts. If you feel strongly for Ariel, tell her. You deserve happiness. Paul pondered his father's wisdom. Do you truly believe that? If she doesn't feel the same, you'll never know if she doesn't give it a shot. That's what I learned from watching your interactions, son, 
the father remarked. Fired up by his dad's advice, Paul resolved to have a heart-to-heart -heart with Ariel. He aimed to lay bare his emotions and find out if she felt the same way. Battling a mix of nerves and optimism, he strategized his approach, hoping beyond hope for reciprocation. That evening, after tucking Clary into bed, Ariel lounged in the living room, absorbed in a book when Paul made his move. Sitting beside her, his heart pounding in his chest, he broke the comfortable silence with a soft but determined voice. Ariel, can we talk about something important? Paul initiated, locking eyes with her. Ariel set aside her book, turning to him with an attentive expression. Of course, Paul. What's on your mind? Paul gathered his courage, taking a deep breath. Lately, my feelings for you have evolved beyond mere friendship. You've illuminated my life in a way I hadn't expected. And here, in this home, my concern for you and Clarina exceeds what I ever imagined. Her words caught me off guard, and I felt my heart quicken with surprise and gratitude. Paul, I've also developed feelings for you. You've been amazing to us, she replied, her voice trembling. Paul gently took her hand. Ariel, I want to be there for you, not just as a friend, but as someone who genuinely cares. I cherish the opportunity to be a part of Clary's life, to nurture her as if she were my own daughter. Tears welled up in Ariel's eyes, moved by Paul's sincerity. That means the world to me. Clarina and I already consider you part of our family. Since that evening, the bond between Paul and Ariel blossomed as Ariel began accompanying Paul to social and professional gatherings. The reactions from people were diverse. Rumors were spreading, some crudely labeling Ariel as the beggar Paul took in. In various gatherings, disdainful glances and whispered conversations surrounded them. Yet, Paul paid no heed to the criticism, always standing by Ariel's side, who found increasing confidence and reassurance in his presence. At a sophisticated art gallery cocktail event, Mrs. Jessie, a prominent member of Paul's social circle, approached the couple with a gracious smile. Paul, Ariel, she greeted them warmly. It's delightful to see you both here. I've heard about your relationship, Ariel, and I must extend my congratulations, Jessie said, maintaining her friendly demeanor. Ariel thanked her, feeling somewhat tense under Jessie's attentive gaze. There was a discomfort in the way Jessie observed her, but Ariel managed to maintain her composure. Jessie maintained her intense gaze on Ariel. It's always nice to see fresh faces here. Ariel, you bring a unique presence, she remarked. Thank you, Mrs. Jessie, Ariel responded courteously. Jessie then extended an invitation. Before I forget, I'd like to invite you both to dinner at my place next week. It'd be delightful to have you. Paul hesitated briefly, feeling obligated to accept, despite his lukewarm enthusiasm. He glanced at Ariel, silently seeking her opinion before replying, We'd be honored, Mrs. Jessie. Jessie appeared content with the response. I look forward to it. It promises to be a wonderful evening, she said, before departing, leaving Paul and Ariel alone once more. With her departure, Paul turned to Ariel. I'm really sorry. I thought it'd be a good idea to accept. I hope you're okay with it he expressed, a hint of concern in his tone. Ariel nodded in agreement, showing her support. No worries, Paul. I believe it'll be quite an interesting experience, she responded, attempting to maintain a positive outlook. They both continued to immerse themselves in the event. However, the thought of dinner at Jessie's place lingered in their minds, evoking a mix of curiosity and caution. The evening of the dinner at Mrs. Jessie's residence finally arrived, and Paul and Ariel got ready for the occasion. As they stepped in, they were awestruck by the elegance and magnificence of the house. It was evident that Jessie was a highly esteemed architect. 
Every aspect of the decor was meticulously planned and flawlessly executed. The visual appeal was striking, seamlessly blending modern and classical art. Jesse warmly welcomed them and gestured for them to take a seat. While Ariel admired the interior, she couldn't shake off a feeling of emptiness in the atmosphere. Despite the stunning exterior, the house lacked the cozy embrace of a welcoming home. Jesse resided solo in the vast mansion, yet its grandeur failed to exude warmth. What a magnificent abode, Ariel complimented cautiously, masking her reservations about the ambiance. Thank you, Ariel. I've poured my heart into every corner, Jesse responded with a prideful grin. Fixating on Ariel with an inscrutable gaze, Jessie delved into her personal history, recounting a tumultuous past marked by injustices. Mrs. Jessie, forgive my confusion, but could you shed light on why you've invited us for dinner? Ariel inquired tentatively. Jessie, gathering her resolve, rose to retrieve a photo album. Returning with it, she revealed a picture of herself from years ago, visibly pregnant. Paul and Ariel studied the image, still puzzled by its significance. Where's the kid? Paul asked, trying to make sense of things. Jessie, with tears in her eyes, stared straight at Ariel. The kid is right here. It's you, Ariel. Paul and Ariel were shocked by what they heard. Ariel glanced at the photo, then at Jessie, processing the enormity of those words. Am I your child? Ariel asked, her voice shaking with emotion. The revelation that she was Ariel's mother hit like a bombshell, leaving everyone at the table stunned. Paul expressed doubt. It sounds impossible, Jessie. Ariel never even met her mother. How can she be sure she's your daughter? Ariel, still trying to wrap her head around the situation, looked between Paul and Jessie, unable to find the right words. The thought that the lady in front of her might be her birth mother was beyond anything she had ever considered. Jessie, her eyes brimming with emotion, began to share her tale. Back in her youth, she knew Ariel's dad. Despite his struggles with alcohol, he appeared decent. We were an item, and I fell pregnant. However, after Ariel's arrival, he changed drastically, turning aggressive. On the day we left the hospital, he snatched her away, vanishing without a trace. Silence enveloped the table as Jessie recounted her ordeal. I exhausted all avenues to find her. I hired investigators, poured fortunes into the search, yet it seemed futile. No trails, no hints leading to my daughter's whereabouts. Ariel absorbed every word, grappling with a whirlwind of emotions. Fury at her mother's absence and the life she missaid tempered with a deep empathy for Jessie's agonizing journey. Ariel's voice trembled as she asked Jessie, Did the man who raised me actually take me from you? Jessie's nod was accompanied by tears streaming down his face. Yes, Ariel, he said, his voice heavy with emotion. He stole the most precious part of my life, and I've been searching for you ever since. When I finally saw you today, something inside me clicked. I couldn't ignore it. You have the same mark on your hand as I do. Jesse's words were filled with both relief and pain. Ariel, still reeling from the revelation, looked at him, her eyes wide with disbelief. But how can you be certain I'm your daughter? she asked. Jesse's voice choked with emotion as he replied, After that day, I asked a trusted investigator to delve into your past. Everything began to fall into place, leading us to your father. Drunk and stumbling on the street, a mere shadow of his former self, he was approached by the investigator who offered him more drinks. In that moment, he began to spill everything, confessing to the truth about how he had taken you away from me. He admitted to his deception, revealing that he had never officially acknowledged you, all to remain hidden. Ariel listened silently, absorbing every word, every detail. It was as if a veil was slowly lifted from her life, revealing hidden truths. 
She understood the extent of his deception, living a life in hiding, fearing discovery, and dragging me along into his shadow, Ariel said, comprehending Jesse's revelation. Paul, looking at Ariel and then at Jesse, expressed his disbelief. It's an incredible story, hard to believe all of it. Ariel's voice quivered as she spoke. I never imagined such a turn in my life. It's a lot to take in. Jesse, her eyes moist, nodded understandingly, saying, I get it, dear. It's a shock for all of us. She added, despite his actions, I arranged for your father to receive care in a supportive setting. He's been diagnosed with schizophrenia and will be there for the rest of his life. Paul, seeking clarification, asked, Even after all he's done to you, Ariel? Jesse let out a deep sigh and replied, Yes, despite everything, he's unwell. He deserves compassion. I held on to years of anger, she continued. But today, seeing my daughter in front of me, the joy I feel overshadows any bitterness. I can't hold grudges against him anymore. Ariel looked at Jesse, a mix of gratitude and confusion in her heart, saying, Thank you for that, Jesse. Despite everything my father has done to me, I'm still grappling with it. But I'm grateful for your care towards him. Ariel reflected. Following these revelations and transformative life experiences, Ariel's world underwent a profound shift. She found herself visiting Jesse's home regularly, both of them striving to rebuild their fractured relationship. Amidst one of their frequent gatherings, Ariel felt the stirrings of hope during an intimate conversation with Jesse. Discussing Ariel's aspirations, Jesse queried, You've always been keen on learning more, haven't you? Ariel, seated on the expansive terrace, her eyes glinting with hope, replied, Yes, I've always dreamt of studying architecture, but the opportunity never arose. Jessie's smile radiated warmth as she remarked, Then it's time to turn that dream into reality. I want you to enroll in the finest architecture school in the country. I'll handle everything. Ariel found herself speechless, bubbling with excitement. Would you really do that for me? She exclaimed, her eyes welling up with tears of gratitude. Jesse gently clasped Ariel's hand across the table. After all we've been through, it's the least I can do and there's more. Jesse assured her. I'm setting up a room for Clarina right here in our home. I want to witness every moment of her growth, something I deeply regret missing with you. Overwhelmed, Ariel now openly wept, a mix of happiness and relief washing over her. That means the world to me, she confessed. Clarina will be so lucky to have a grandmother like you, Jessie. Amidst their warm interactions, a heartfelt conversation unfolded between Ariel and Jesse. As Clarina played in the garden, Jesse confided in Ariel, My greatest dream since meeting you is to earn the title of being loved as your mother. But I understand that it's all very new, and I respect your time. I'll do everything in my power to prove worthy of that honor. Jessie's heartfelt words stirred Ariel's emotions, prompting her sincere reply, You're already doing so much, Jessie. Every little thing you do means the world to me. I can feel us growing closer with each passing day. As time went on, their bond deepened naturally. Ariel became a frequent visitor to Jessie's home, where Clarina, the young girl, found joy and comfort in Jessie's company. Her laughter filled the air, bringing a warmth and sense of family that had long been absent from their lives. Years flew by, and as Ariel neared the end of her architecture studies, she eagerly prepared for her graduation day a momentous occasion marking the culmination of her journey. The graduation ceremony buzzed with excitement as teachers, family and friends gathered to celebrate Ariel's achievements. With pride and gratitude swelling in her heart, Ariel scanned the crowd, seeking out three special individuals, 
her devoted husband and her ever-supportive father-in-law who had stood by her side through it all. Throughout her journey, Ariel found immense guidance from Incio, a constant paternal presence, and Jessie, her unwavering supporter in architecture. As she stepped onto the stage, she glanced at the audience, prepared to deliver her speech. Today, I'm here not just because of my efforts, but also because of the steadfast support from some remarkable individuals, she declared with deep emotion. She added, my husband always by my side, encouraging me to chase my dreams, my father-in-law embracing me as his own, offering comfort during tough times. Pausing as her eyes met Jessie's, she went on, and undoubtedly, my cherished motherly figure, Jessie. Mom, you gave me more than just education. You provided me with a sanctuary love and the sense of belonging I've always yearned for. Ariel's sincere words deeply touched everyone present, yet Jessie was particularly moved. Overwhelmed by emotion, she couldn't stop her tears, reaching out to Ariel with trembling hands. As Ariel finished speaking, Jessie's emotions overflowed, tears streaming down her cheeks. The simple word, Mom, from Ariel resonated deeply with Jessie, sparking a rush of love, thankfulness, and profound satisfaction within her. In that moment, years of longing and doubt faded, replaced by pure happiness and connection. After the event, Jessie approached Ariel, embracing her tightly. Their embrace bridged the gap of years, solidifying their bond. My daughter, Jessie whispered, her voice heavy with emotion. You filled a void in me I never knew existed. Comforting Jessie, Ariel responded. Mom, you've shown me the true meaning of family and love. I'm endlessly grateful for everything. Post the graduation, they strolled away hand in hand, filled with fresh hope and positivity for the future. They firmly believed that onwards, life would be brighter. Their journey testified to a mother's unwavering love, triumphing over hardships, showcasing a mother's unwavering commitment to her child amidst life's challenges. Enjoyed this tale? Give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe to catch more captivating stories. Your backing enables us to keep delivering fantastic tales to you almost daily. Stay tuned for the next one. Thanks a ton for your support. Till next time.